So we already broke down the Polygon article over weapon crafting. However, there were many of you that wanted us to cover the whole Void subclass update and Light subclass conversion. So starting with this article right here, Destiny 2 players won't lose entire supers in the subclass conversion, Bungie says. At its Destiny showcase last week, Bungie revealed that Destiny 2's old Light subclasses will get the stasis treatment, starting in the Witch Queen expansion and continuing throughout year 5. While players seem to universally prefer the less rigid stasis upgrade path to the original light ones players may have had some concerns about what they may lose in the conversion yes that's actually exactly what i was concerned about but in an interview with polygon destiny Tunes game director joe blackburn and general manager justin truman allayed those fears there are no plans right now for us for players to lose anything substantial in the conversion said blackburn if you're talking about something like nova warp or if you're talking about something like spectral blades we want to make sure all of that is still there one of the things we're really passionate about is when players log in on day one in the witch queen and they're exploring void 3.0 and that they don't feel like a bunch of stuff got taken away from them now last year then game director luke smith now director for destiny 2's franchise at bungie told polygon that players could lose access to certain supers if bungie ever chose to convert the subclass in an example he gave if developers refine the identity for void walker warlocks they might choose to focus on the nova bomb super which smith called IP defining and remove the Nova Warp Super first added in Forsaken. Now while Smith was just postulating potential futures, the Destiny community exploded. Fans have spent nearly a year asking the studio not to remove supers if the time ever came to change up the subclasses. Yeah that was us guys. I didn't like it man. It was a big yikes to me considering we just came off the backs of seeing a lot of destinations get sunset and a lot of weapons get sunset. So it was like a combination of things here guys where I got concerned. I was like oh my god. Bungie's literally cutting everything out. But Bungie's announcement that Void, the element Nova Warp uses, would be the first subclass to face the conversion likely made some players nervous. But Blackburn and Truman say they want players to be amazed by the possibilities that Void 3.0 offers them, not filled with a sense of loss. Sandbox Discipline lead Kevin Giannis confirmed on Twitter that when Bungie unveiled the first Void 3.0 details, the studio has no plan to remove Nova Warp specifically. But what Blackburn and Truman told us should apply to all familiar supers. I would think of this conversion a lot like you think about the stasis system. All up, said Blackburn. Think about, hey, what does this system look like where there are just multiple supers to be able to slot into the system as well? Void 3.0 and future light subclasses should offer more customization for players, pulling them away from the current systems where players can choose between a cluster of four perks. Domblade Warlocks currently have to select highly aerial versions of the Daybreak Super or a healing focused super called Well of Radiance. By selecting one or the other they get a host of perks that works for that play style and a little flexibility but the subclass rework will free players of those constraints while still allowing them to rebuild those synergistic play styles in talking with blackburn and truman we offered a hypothetical situation where a warlock player could create a hyper mobile healer build combining perks from both play style trees blackburn acknowledged that something like that may be possible when solo 3.0 launches next year oh but he also dove into how that highlights the improvement in the stasis system. Okay, so what I'm getting from this, it's like a mobile well of radiance. That would be nice. Now, by decoupling perks from supers, players have so much more choice in how they play. Bungie mentioned in its weekly blog that players can combine a Void Titan ability normally used to kill large group of enemies with the more defensive focused Ward of Dawn super. Instead of just using the healing focus tree, players can use damage based supers with healing passives or the other way around. Guardians could couple a sustained perk like Warlock's devour with the mobility of Nova War. It opens up a host of bizarre combinations and Truman said he's looking forward to players coming up with combos Bungie doesn't expect. Guys I want you to know that this adds to the skill curve the skill gap inside of Destiny 2. This was something we had in Destiny 1 but it's going to be even more in depth here inside of Destiny 2 with the stasis layout with Void 3.0 and the skill gap here is just not going to be a selection of different nodes of a subclass but actually how much you truly understand each in every one of those abilities. Now, as Bungie mentioned in its blog last week, some things will still change with the conversion. Familiar and key play styles like Devour will still be there, and there will also be new perks and abilities for players to use. Definitive is the focus here, but not everything reaches that level of importance. Some of our melees and some of these existing trees and some of our passives were not as exciting. Some of those, it's like, yeah, that's okay to lose. We knew that was a weak point in the tree anyways. Blackburn didn't offer specifics, but players who experience
expect every passive and melee in the game to move over may be disappointed. Some supers that are functionally the same, like the multiple arc staffs or fist of havoc, may also get consolidated and use the aspect system to differentiate them. Maintaining each playstyle and identity, like the difference between Nova Warp and Nova Bomb, is key, but not a one to one conversion. Ah, interesting. You know, I do think that there is going to be some changes with our supers and how they functionally work, making them all potent options to choose from. Take, for instance, Tether getting its change, where it's going to shoot off two volleys. That's roughly a consolidation of both top tree and bottom tree Tether, when you really start to think about it. I am completely fine with supers changing on that level, as long as the potency exceeds that of what it was. For players who might read that and fear that something unimportant to Bungie may be important to them, Blackburn refer back to their high level goals for the project. It's really important that for us, when you log in on day one, you're not like, Bungie took away from me, said Blackburn. That is a huge non go for us. I can believe that, guys. I mean, the last thing Bungie wants, considering that these light subclass changes, they're part of the package, man. They're part of the marketing for Witch Queen. Just like Beyond Light had Stasis, Forsaken had the Forsaken Supers, Witch Queen has Void 3.0, Arc 3.0, and Solar 3.0. If Bungie does this correctly, and I do have a lot of faith in Bungie to get this right, hopefully, when we get into the game and we're playing with Void 3.0, we're just gonna be like, yo, this is exactly what we've been wanting. Now, Blackburn and Truman went on to say that players also won't need to re-earn any of their abilities through quests in the way players had to earn new aspects and fragments for Stasis each season. And while the duo didn't announce future additions to light subclasses or stasis, they say that new stasis systems allow bungees to add abilities and passives over time, potentially giving players more options on a seasonal basis. The feeling of the year after the Witch Queen launches is going to be really different from the feeling of any of the previous years that we rolled out in terms of the amount of evolution that you're going to see, said Truman. Not just to like the meta of the weapons, but to your fundamental abilities. I think it's going to be a higher bar than we've hit in previous years. Fellas, that is a hell of a statement. The reason why this is a big statement, this is following what Luke Smith said last year. And Luke Smith essentially came out and said, hey, it's a good chance we're going to be cutting out non-IP defining supers, maybe whole subclasses. So he was already kind of like fishing to see where can we go with this? How far can we go with this? How much can we cut? How much can we consolidate? But simultaneously, in that same article, Luke Smith brought up that Forsaken and its scope will probably never be met inside of Destiny 2 again, which bummed us the hell out. Many of us were like, really? Because Forsaken was the bar. From Black Armory to the Menagerie to Forsaken itself and the new subclasses, the campaign, there was a lot that Forsaken got right. And not just right at launch, but for that entire year following. This right here, Truman saying it's going to be a higher bar than we hit any previous year and Blackburn even confirmed to us in the reveal that every season we're going to be getting either a new raid or a new dungeon fellas I think we're about to enter a golden period of destiny if you didn't believe it before and we made this video last year why destiny 2 beyond light is essentially destiny 3 believe it now we are entering sequel territory but still under the same umbrella which I am completely okay with these void subclass reworks sounds like it's going to be really juicy will it make arc in solar subclasses feel outdated? Possibly. But that's a good thing in my opinion. That means whatever Void 3.0 is, it must be good if it's making us feel that way. Again though, none of this goes live until the Witch Queen launches on February the 22nd. If you want to check out this article from Polygon, feel free to go check it out guys. Overall, I'm liking what I'm hearing because it seems like internally, Bungie doesn't want to get rid of some of the abilities and subclasses and supers that we have. Bungie also wants to over deliver and give us an expansion even surpassing that of Forsaken. I Consider how many people they've been hiring here lately. I think that's very possible. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.